Bears on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Live Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding and making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. We now take you live to the Central Texas Command Center in the heart of the resistance, rallying patriots worldwide. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. As everyone knows, I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. If Republicans get back into office and then become tyrants, I will pivot over to trying to defeat the rhinos. But I am a libertarian, I am a constitutionalist, I'm pro-gun, I'm pro-life, so I've always been put in the Republican camp. And I was attacked by the left the entire time that I was criticizing the Patriot Act and George W. Bush. There isn't a war, isn't torture, isn't evil they don't like. They are the dominant party. The Republicans play the part of kind of the loyal opposition placeholder. But there's a libertarian constitutional movement to take it back. Ron Paul and myself and others started the Real Tea Party eight years ago. Really the election before last, I guess longer. Then it got big right before Obama got elected and then after and the media made it partisan. The Tea Party used to go out and confront Republicans and Democrats. That's what we want. That's why you have the Republican and Democratic leadership with the wagon circle, with the big Republican donors. This is no secret. It's on record. Attacking the real Tea Party right now. You've got Karl Rove's been doing it. 
because that's it for their takeover if we do this. But I'll tell you, Harry Reid is the leader of the Senate. He's the third most important person in the country when it comes to government. And he's dirty. Dirty Harry. He's got a lot of dirt on him. On campaign finance and his kids getting business deals for things he votes on. And finally, it's being asked about the Chinese deal and the land grabs. That was in the news two years ago when it first broke. They're trying to act like none of it's even real now. Because it's not his ranch where the main stuff goes in. They want his ranch as a set aside and say it in the documents. We're going back to our guest here and then to your calls. But now it's finally up there. Fire Harry Reid becomes rallying cry heading into 2014 elections. Exactly what I was talking about. He's the poster child, folks. Harry Reid. That's in the Washington Times. How did he become so wealthy? Real Clear Politics talks about how he had no money when he got into Congress, and now he's filthy rich. I mean, Feinstein went in with like a million bucks. Some estimates are she's worth 150 mil. Lower estimates, 100 mil. And then she gives business deals to her husband who makes billions since she got in. Be pretty cool to have a wife that was a senator and gave you billions, huh? So how do they counter the fact that the establishment's in trouble? Well, you race bait. You don't like Obamacare, you're racist. Don't want to turn your guns in, you're racist. And then you can go around and get honest people to say, I think it's terrible. Blacks are in a new form of slavery. Well, they'd be better off being back, you know, picking cotton. That sounds like something every old hillbilly I've known would say, talking bad about how the black community's been wrecked by the new form of slavery, not endorsing it. I mean, how many black leaders do I have on that are libertarians or Christians or conservatives who say pretty much what Bundy said? I bet if we get, uh, who's the reverend on from New York? It'll pop in my head in a minute. We have one all the time. I had one of those moments where, no, not Childress. He's in Atlanta. And then I had the NAACP former leader up from up in Dallas on. He said, this basically, it's very similar things, but said it's smarter, a lot smarter. Like, they replace one evil with a new evil. Um, the guy that calls Obama a long-legged mag daddy. He's in Harlem. Oh, yeah. We'll move on. Atla, mem Atla, that's what God says. And, and then now I'm having one of those m moments. If you just go to Atla, he's right there. Atla Worldwide. The point is, he would say all these same things. I, but I love how children's you know, and others expose abortion, but then they don't get called racist for not wanting to abort black people. But then Pastor Pastor David Manning, yes, that's the name. But then Bundy saying they're aborting all their kids, this is terrible. Isn't slavery better than killing your kids? And they turn it into racism. So going to a black member of the militia, an American, who has the same mind as I do, the same, the same love of liberty, so I don't look at what color he is, Jason Bullock, we got some photos of him, uh, out there with the security detail we'll put up on screen. Uh, closing comments on what I just said. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What do you have to say on that front, sir? Our first, I have to say that I'm not associated with the militia. I'm an individual patriot. Okay, well, I want to... Uh, uh, same thing. I mean, every man until you're like 48 is in the militia. So I'm in the militia. Second Amendment's the militia. So you're a, you're an individual patriot. How, how else would you describe yourself? Um, I'm an American. I was born here. I was raised here. I don't call myself African American because I've never been to Africa. So, so what do you think of the statements I just made uh, in relation? I mean, do you agree with them? Disagree? Want to augment them? Want to subtract from them? Well, I, I agree with what you're saying, and um, that people have just become so used to taking things out of context and all for the sake of political correctness, and it's it's really that's one of the ways they're destroying this nation, and it needs to stop. Well, that's why we're all here. Well, they're scared of a thousand people marching up against feds with the guns aimed at them. The feds saying we're going to shoot you and the feds having to back down. So what did you expect? Of course, it was going to be racism. And Bundy got asked questions about why aren't there any minorities here? And he said, I've invited them. I wish they were here. And, and then he went into a whole spiel about the new slavery. Do you want to apologize for being racist against black people because you don't want to abort them all? Or, or, or do you support the liberals who aren't racist who want to kill basically all black people? Um, I, I really can't say what side I'm on. And actually, I have to go right now. I um, have some, 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 uh, something to do for this detail. Okay, good. Well, I was being sarcastic, so you know. I'm saying Margaret Sanger and those folks are the real racists. How long are you going to be out there again? Another two weeks? I'll be out there for a couple of 
be out here for at least two weeks. All right. Well, listen, we appreciate you talking to us. Give us the name of your Instagram so folks can check it out. My Instagram is uh, Grizzle the Beast, all one word. All right. Well, well, were you there during the big famous event that happened when everybody walked across the line? Yes, I was there. Well, in 30 seconds, what was your take on that epic moment? I, I almost shed a tear of joy. All right. Well, listen, uh, Mr. Bullock, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. All right. There he goes, folks. I guess some people are arriving. They got to go check out what's going on. Let's go back to your phone calls. Uh, look, they're going to have a heyday with this, but this race thing is running out of gas. And remember, they had Tea Party events last year in Houston three times where they caught Democratic operatives from Austin dressed up as hayseeds saying racist things to make the Tea Party look bad. It was put on the news. And then they did the same thing as Senator Paul when he was had won uh, the uh, nomination as the Republican candidate. The Democrats dressed up and did it. Just, just remember, the New York Times created fake photos. In this, they're not doing that. They're taking what an old rancher. Bundy's not a fossil because he lives in the middle of nowhere and, 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 and is an older man. He's a fossil because his ideas are so old-fashioned that he'll just tell you what he's really thinking. And then he'll tell you, you know, what he stands for. But they're just, it's going to be an infall war. Race and religious division is what they're going to use, and they're never going to stop. And usually there's not even a grain of complaint there. It's whole cloth made up. Usually it is completely made up. With this, they've got a grain because to the condition politically correct, you know, this sounds terrible because they don't understand the position he's coming from. I've heard things like this so many times in my life, I know exactly where it's coming from. I can tell you that the vast majority of old white people, A, are guilty about things that have gone on in this country, but B, hate to see the degeneration of all the culture, the young people across the board, and bemoan what's happened to the black community in this country, who no one can deny is in a disaster zone. I mean, it's, it's being destroyed in front of our very eyes. And so that's my final comment on that. But enough about that. I just you know, wanted to get that fella on. Harry Reid's long study uh, massing of power and wealth. That's the big question we should be focusing on. But it's like when Clinton was giving missile secrets to China. They would say on CNN, is it racist that there's investigations of missile secrets to China? I don't know. If I tried to give missile secrets to somebody, I'd be arrested. I mean, I don't... I don't if I gave missile secrets to Germany, would it be okay? No, it wouldn't be. I mean, it's just that's all they've got is tribal identification, and it's how they have been able to divide this country, and I'm sick of it. All right, let's go to Andrew in California. Thanks for holding. You're on the air, Andrew. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Can you Good, hear me? Good, brother. Yes, I can. Excellent. So I wanted to say that my uh, dad, who's in the military, uh, high up in the Army, confirmed all the FEMA camps throughout the United States and the fact that when there is a national emergency, FEMA takes over, not even the executive branch, he was saying. That's yeah, that's in all the executive orders that are public. It's in the Emergency Centers Establishment Act, Rex 84, Garden Plot, Cable Slicer, all declassified, civilian and inmate labor camp even, program. Yeah, and he's even saying that's completely just unconstitutional. So your dad's currently right. in the Army or just out of it? Tell us what he says. No, he's currently in the Army. He's about to retire this year. They're forcing him to retire. Tell, tell us what his rank is and specifics of what he said to you. Describe him coming in and saying, son, the FEMA camps are real, word for word. Okay. Um, he is a major in the U.S. Army. Uh, he was deployed in Bosnia and then Iraq twice. And I asked him about you know FEMA camps, and he confirmed, yes, they have them all over the United States. But he still kind of thinks they're, you know, they're using him more for emergency. I don't know if he's on bar as much as, you know, we would be. But he, he confirmed everything and said they will take over. He said they will take over, period. The governor can't do anything about it. They take over. That's it. Yeah, that's the John Warner Defense Authorization Act says that for insurrection by the states or governors or legislatures, now they're going to federalize the National Guard, seize all infrastructure and communications of anybody that doesn't play ball, and then it expanded on with Obama, and it's total high treason. But to have that takeover, they've got to collapse things and blame it on something else. So you've got to get that intel to your dad so he understands.